Thank you so much for joining us today for the third and final installment of our webinar series on sample preparation for in-situ transmission electron microscopy. I'm Zaina and I'm the product specialist here at Protochips. As my colleagues mentioned in previous webinars in this series, uh, you can get the link uh, in the chat if you haven't already watched previous uh, sessions. We felt that sample preparation uh, was important to focus on because it is a critical component of, of a workflow that can severely affect the reproducibility of an experiment and thus the validity of your results. This could be said for just about any analysis technique. Uh, however, working at the nanoscale means that even very small changes can cause very big differences. Our company chooses to focus on the entire workflow for in-situ TEM and not just providing TEM-related hardware. Everything from sample preparation to data collection to scaling from bulk to nano with relevance, all the way through data management and analysis. All of these areas can make or break the success of your experiment and thus need uh, consideration because we know that success doesn't simply lie in the specifications of the Institute hardware itself. Again, this series is focused on sample preparation, and today you will learn from highly talented scientists um, that I'm very happy to present on valuable uh, tips, tricks, and considerations for FIB preparation for in-situ TEM. And with this being the finale, we're happy to have not one, but actually two speakers, Mr. Roberto Garcia from NC State University um, and Dr. Vesna Schrott from the Max Planck Institute. Before I introduce our first star um, of the webinar, a couple of housekeeping um, rules to go over. Everyone is muted due to the audience size to prevent uninten unintentional interruptions while our presenter is giving his talk. Uh, if you have questions, please enter them in the question box on your GoToWebinar panel, and we will address them at the end. There will be a short survey that pops up at the end of the webinar. Uh, we would greatly appreciate if you uh, would fill out the survey uh, to help us for future webinars. And a certificate of completion will come to your email after the webinar if, it's, if that is something that you're interested in. Uh, we will reserve questions for the end of the webinar after both speakers have given um, have given um, after both speakers have spoken. Uh, so it'll give them both an opportunity to answer the questions. However, if you have specific questions directed to one person, please include their name uh, with your question. Okay, so now I'll tell you a little bit about our first speaker. After a graduation from Rensselaer uh, Polytech Institute with a master's degree, Roberto worked in industry and other educational institutions. Roberto has dedicated the past 25 years of his career to serving NC State University, where he has consistently advanced his responsibilities and skills across various roles. Currently, Roberto serves as the operation and focused ion beam lab manager, which lends itself to his expertise in FIB preparation. So without further ado, I will hand the mic over to Roberto. Great. Thank you very much. Hello, uh, I'm Roberto Garcia with the Analytical Instrumentation Facility here at NC State. And today I want to show you how to prepare samples for protochips grids. Um, I've adapted my process from the protochips video that's currently on YouTube. And I've made just a few tweaks that I believe make it uh, a little bit easier. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want to discuss is the instrument. So uh, I have a Thermo Fisher Quanta 3D Fit. It's 12 years old. So yes, it's still running on XP and it does give me some issues. <laughs> it's a gallium source fit. Uh, and we'll be using platinum deposition for uh, when we do any deposition. The sample that I'm using is silicon substrate with a coating on there, and it's going to go onto a ProChips uh, E-chip. Uh, I have put them on um, uh, the heating chips as well. Heating chips are a little bit trickier because, of course, they've got that membrane, and it's one of those things that uh, typically you know when it goes wrong, it, that membrane just kind of breaks. So uh, first thing, let's discuss the process. The big uh, big plus of the video uh, that I remember uh, uh, 
identifying is that they mount their samples on this double 45 degree mount. And that has really helped me out quite a bit. So uh, if you're not doing this on a four, double 45 degree mount and you're finding it difficult, I would recommend getting one of these. Uh, next step is just simply, it's almost like making a regular TEM sample. You're gonna be doing your deposition of platinum on the surface. Then you're gonna be doing your hog out where you just remove a bulk material. Uh, thinning it down in place. You're going to do your J-cut, uh, go down to the final thinning process uh, while it's in, uh, it's still attached in the sample, and then you're going to uh, attach the needle and extract it and place it onto the grid, onto the chip in this case. So let's discuss the geometry a little bit. So for my instrument, the ion beam is at 52 degrees to the electron beam. So by placing it on the 45 degree mount, what I have to do is I have to tilt plus seven degrees to get it perpendicular to the ion beam. So that's why you're gonna be, uh, I'm gonna make a, a kind of like this, you'll see this little diagram every now and then on these uh, screens so that you'll notice how I'm tilting the sample. But that's kind of like the, the big trick. Not everyone has uh, their ion beam at 52 degrees, so that's why I make this designation here. If you have a different system and it's at a different angle, then you're going to have to make that adjustment. So the first step after the platinum deposition and removing on either side uh, is basically what you do for TEM sample prep. So it's no, no surprise here. This is, most people should that are making TEM samples uh, should know how to do this. And you're basically going to be at perpendicular to the gallium beam. So we're gonna be at plus seven degrees. And basically it's just removing material from either side uh, of that area of interest. Okay, so not a lot, nothing really major here. We're just doing our, our major removal. Uh, the only big thing is that we're at plus seven degrees. Okay. So after you've done this step, you should have uh, a lot of removal on either side of the um, of the area of interest, and it'll still be a little bit on the fixed side. So now we're going to go to the font to basically clean up cut. Okay. So when I do the clean up cuts, I like to do uh, at least plus or minus six degrees to make sure I get a good, nice, even finish and a little bit of undercutting on the bottom. The biggest issue I've always had with these samples is making sure that I get a clean release from the bottom. So what we're gonna do in the video, if you see the uh, video on the pro chips, they only tilt to negative 10 degrees to do their cut. Now, in, <clears throat> in all honesty, when they do their sample prep, they go to a very thin sample. I'm gonna keep mine a little bit on the thicker side, uh, but I find it a much easier to go plus 45 degrees, and if I have to, go minus 12 degrees. Like I said, my biggest issue is still having the attachment at the bottom, and I noticed when I did uh, all the steps in their uh, process, I was spending most of my time doing that final cutout from the bottom. So that's why I've actually kind of widened the areas on either side a little bit. And typically the plus 45 degrees will release it, but a lot of times I'll go to minus uh, 12 degrees in my system to also kind of remove from the other side. That's the biggest issue I've had is making sure that that bottom part is released. So now I'm just gonna do the J cut. I'm gonna go, this is uh, at plus 45 degrees. I'm gonna go from the bottom. I'm removing material uh, on the sides and, and the bottom. And just to be absolutely sure, I'm gonna go from the back. See, there's still a little bit of attachment on the back. And the very last thing is to make sure that I've got that release from the bottom, okay? So, like I said, ProChips in their video, they go to a very thin sample. 
Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a fairly thin sample in the center, but I'm also going to have some of these uh, thicker shoulders on, on my sample. And you'll see this a little bit later. I'll go into that. So when I do my final polishing, I'm going to basically go through a three degree range. Okay, so I'll go plus one or minus two. Uh, but basically, it's just uh, the thinning process. We're going to go through it. And at this point, after this thinning process, this is the top side of your sample, or this is the side that's going to go against the um, grid. So if you have a heating chip, this is the side that's going to go towards the uh, the heating, uh, towards the chip. So you, you can actually, after you've done this process, do your 2KV uh, polish if you want. Okay, so now we've got it to the point where it's pretty thin. Um, you can do a 2KV polish. I wouldn't worry about 2KV polish on the front side. The nice thing about E-chips is they've got that channel. So once you've actually landed it on the E-chip, you can actually do your 2KV polish uh, after you've landed. Okay, so the next step is the needle attach. Now in the video uh, for pro chips, they come in and they attach at the top, similar to what you would do for a uh, fib lift out. What I've actually found a little bit easier is to attach uh, from behind, okay? Just a little bit behind from the top. And I'll show you how to do that now. Now it does get a little bit tricky because what ends up happening is since you're at a 45 degree angle and you're raising your sample up, things are kind of, moving up but also forward as you can see in the ion beam so it, it takes a little bit of practice this is a little bit of a confusing part this is where i usually go very slow because i want to make sure that i hit it just behind the um uh the top of the sample okay and then once you hit you basically do your uh, platinum deposition to uh, attach the needle then after that, it's simply just uh, detaching the right-hand side, uh, typical what you would do for TEM sample prep. So now the next step, this is this is really the, the tricky part, okay? Everything else has been pretty much routine that we've done for uh, typical FIB liftouts. But now we're going to take the sample and we're going to touch it down onto the chip. It's not a big deal for this e-chip, because it's a, basically a bulk silicon chip with a, a channel in it. The really tricky one is a heating chip, okay, because that's a very thin membrane. Uh, and like I said, anytime you pop that membrane, it's total failure, okay? So what I'll do here is the needle is raised up to a high position, uh, kind of what we call eucentric high. So, and this is the, the, um, the needle with the sample on it. The gas injection needle is right now at kind of like the lowest spot. So I use that as kind of a gauge and I'm going very slowly. So sometimes I will actually touch that needle, but not harshly. So I'm not ramming into it, but uh, I know that the service engineers basically touch the needle anyway, most of the time to uh, gauge the uh, depth when they set the needle anyway. So touching the needle is just kind of my guide to know, hey, I'm way too close. So in this video, like I said, the geometry is a little bit tricky. So you're going to see me jumping back and forth between the electron beam and the ion beam quite a bit. Because as you're raising up, it's also kind of moving forward and away in, in certain cases. So you're going to see going back and forth and you're kind of just kind of weaving back and forth, kind of zeroing in to get to that right spot. And now we're going to bring our sample in closer. And as we get closer, you're going to see this shadowing effect. Okay, that lets you know how close you're getting. Okay, the other thing I'll say is that before we attach the needle, I don't know if you saw this in the upper right hand corner, we're at plus 14 degrees. So we're actually uh, a little bit slightly tilted. Uh, so we're not exactly par parallel to the chip itself, we're just slightly tilted. So when it hits, you'll see that the back end hits first and then the chip kind of, or the uh, sample kind of. Uh, falls flat on the chip. 
And then the next step is just to tack it down with the electron beam. So we're going to use electron beam, not the ion beam, because we're perpendicular with more perpendicular with the electron beam here. So we're just going to go with um, uh, low KV and high current, very high. All we're doing is just tacking it down. Okay, we just want to tack down one corner so that when we release this, uh, static forces don't basically uh, warp the uh, the sample. Okay, and that's all we do. I mean, and you can see that the time is set for something like 45 minutes. I just set it for high. I'm just looking really at the deposition. Once I get a good deposition, I stop it. Okay. So then the next step is to do the cutaway. So like I said, on the E-chip, it's not that big of a deal. Uh, right behind here is all silicon. On the uh, heating chip, it's a membrane. So if I start cutting and I overshoot, that's going to be an issue. That's that's going to hit the membrane and it's going to uh, break it. And I've done that several times. So what I've started doing, like I said before, is leaving these shoulders on here a little bit thicker. And you'll see why, um, because I'm starting to cut away and as I go back and forth with the uh, electron beam and the ion beam, you'll see that as it's cutting in, it's actually gonna dig into the shoulder, that little side that's a little bit thicker. Okay, so I'm cutting and I've cut away and you can see that the overshoot has gotten onto the shoulder here. It's cut away. If this was a much thinner sample or if I had attached at the top, there's a good chance that I might just break the window uh, at the front or in the back. So that's why I leave it a little bit thicker like this. I, I've never had any issues with breaking windows in this case. And then, of course, the final step is just making your connections. So at this point, you can either continue on with the electron beam. Uh, you can also rotate it around and use the ion beam to get a little bit thicker deposition. Uh, if I'm trying to get good contact here, here's my electrodes here on this side and on that side. And pretty much my biggest tips are to practice. Uh, don't use the uh, ch chips themselves, they're kind of expensive. What I would say is get yourself a piece of plain silicon um, and just kind of practice. Biggest thing is the landing. So uh, landing and then the removal. Uh, make sure you establish a good workflow for your instrument. Like I said, uh, you might have different angles or uh, different conditions set up for your uh, instrument. And the big thing is repetition. So in making this uh, presentation, I probably went through three samples. Uh, it's something I do maybe four or five of these a year, so I kind of get out of practice. But once you get a certain routine in, uh, it becomes very methodical. So basically go slow. Like I said, it's going to be tricky when you have that 45 degree mount. So as you bring it up, kind of practice to see how much you have to uh, bring it forward as you raise it up. Uh, identify any areas are going to be kind of tricky. And, and the biggest one is going to be that needle cutoff if you're trying to land this onto a heating chip. The heating chips, like I said, little mistakes, you're, get, you're just gonna lose it very quickly. And finally, thank you very much. Uh, thanks to ProChips for this opportunity to present this. And if you have any questions, you can email me directly. Uh, you can also check out our website and some of our YouTube videos for uh, other uh, presentations that I've done before on uh, Fib Sample Prep. All right, and that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, Roberto, for this wonderful talk. Um, there are already some questions, and for those of you who joined us a little bit late, um, please put your questions in uh, the uh, GoToWebinar control panel, um, and we will address these questions at the end, giving both of our speakers the opportunity to chime in. Uh, so next we have uh, Dr. Schrott. So Vesna Schrott obtained her PhD in geology and mineralogy from the University of Ljubljana, Slovenia. 
She continued her postdoctoral studies at the Max Planck Institute in Stuttgart, uh, Germany. Since 2015, she has, um, she has been employed as a research scientist at the Max Planck Institute for Solid State Research, where, she, where her research focuses on advanced analytical STEM characterization of natural and man-made biological and bio-inspired uh, functional materials. Lately, she's been intensively working on the focused iron beam prepar sample preparation of samples for electrical biasing in situ experiments and on their characterization in the TEM. She will present a novel and optimized FIV-based methodology for preparing contamination and damage-free samples on MEMS chips for in-situ electrical and electrothermal experiments. This newly developed FIV sample preparation routine minimizes attachment and detachment steps and reduces the use of platinum fixation owing to an alternate geometry. Uh, the quality of produced lamella on the chip resembles, resembles that of the quality of a classical FIB prepared sample. Various sample preparation parameters and performance in in-situ prepared samples uh, will be evaluated throughout her talk uh, through electrical biasing experiments. And again, without further ado, I welcome Dr. Schrott. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't see my slides now. We can see them, Vesna. Thank, so you. thank you so much for your kind introduction. And thank you much to everybody for joining today this webinar. Today, I will present to you our recently developed method that can be used for preparation of high quality samples for MEMS based in situ electrical and electrothermal experiments. So transmission electron microscopy offers high spatial, high temporal and high energy resolution that provides unique information for understanding the properties and functions of materials. With TM, we can characterize morphology, chemistry, crystal structure, electronic structure of materials that can be used for different applications such as catalysis, electronic devices, energy materials, and many others. Under controlled environmental conditions and with the ability to dynamically influence the sample by external stimuli, we can turn our TM into a very powerful laboratory. Due to this recent uh, accelerated development of specimen holders, and with the integration of MEMS devices, we are now able to apply different external stimuli, such as biasing, heating, cooling, liquid, gas, and light. However, there is always this however, the validity of our analysis is strongly dependent on the quality of our samples. Our samples must be prepared in such a way that they maintain their pristine properties even when we thin them to electron transparency. Currently, there are different sample preparation approaches for in situ electrical and electrothermal experiments. However, most of them, they have this intermediate step when lamella is first fixed to the grid and then to the FIP chip. Recently, prototypes developed this FIP optimized e chip that you could see in previous presentation, and they use it in combination with this pre tilted FIP step. When it comes to MEMS chips, we have different possibilities. When we worked on electrical biasing experiments, so the most, um, the most, uh, I would the most recommend this FIP optimized e chip because in this case we have electrodes that are directly on the uh, on the frame of the chip and so when we land the lamella there is no membrane we have access to this lamella from the front and from the back side and then there are other chips so electrothermal e chips four point electrical e chips and E chips with finger configurations. In this case, we have this membrane. So electrodes are sitting on the membrane. And when we land the lamella, so from the back side, we have the membrane. And we can access the lamella only from the front side. 
what was the motivation for our work? So we wanted to, to prepare clean and artifact free samples for in situ electrical and electrothermal experiments and to reduce or at least to minimize attaching detaching steps. Here I mean especially that we don't need to fix the chip several times on different holders and to minimize so to go from lamella directly on the chip to skip this intermediate grid. Then of course to minimize use of platinum and to reduce contamination with platinum and gallium because nobody wants these two on the samples. And now to the results. So I will present to you now step-by-step -step preparation of this new optimized method. And then I will quickly go through some characterization in TM. If you are interested to see more, just please uh, check our recent paper. This was published in Microscopy and Microanalysis. What are the requirements for our method? We need, of course, FIP. This FIP needs to have this micro manipulator needle. And what is very important is you will see also later that we need to precisely shape this needle that looks like a pencil. And then we just need some custom holders. So if we work on the e-chip with the membrane, we need two flat holders. If we work on the FIP optimized e chip, we need one flat holder and one holder with tilt possibility. What are the main differences when we compare this classical FIP preparation or other in situ preparation methods and our optimized method? In our case, we leave some extra space on one side of this platinum strap. And we use an alternative orientation during the lift out procedure. And because of this, we can land the lamella directly on the chip. So experimental setup in FIP, we used FIP FEI SIOS dual beam system. The sample was silicon. And here you can see also the holders what we used. And now I will show you step-by-step -step preparation. So as for all other fit preparation, first we need to deposit this platinum strap on the area of interest. Then we remove the material on both sides of the platinum strap. And as I said already before, on one side, we must leave extra space. Then we perform the U-cut. And as you can see also here with this U-cut, we try to go as high as possible because this will help us later on when we will cut out the lamella. Then we rotate our stage for 90 degrees in clockwise direction. And then we insert the lift out needle and we fix the lift out needle here at the top. It's important that this area with extra space is at the bottom. And then in the next step, we cut the lamella free here at the bottom, as you can see here. Uh, at the beginning, this step can be a little bit messy until you get a feeling when the lamella is really cut free. Then in the next step, we first just slowly pull the lamella out. Why I said slowly? Because in the case that something is still attached here, maybe we can still rescue such lamella. So we first slowly pull it out and then we completely retract the needle with our lamella. And then this you don't have to do it, but I would recommend you that you lower the stage because in such way we have now a little bit more space because in next steps we will do a little bit of gymnastics here. Then we insert again the needle with our uh, lamella on it and we rotate the needle for 90 degrees in anti-clockwise direction. In the case that you will deposit this lamella on the chip with a membrane, now is the time that you clean the backside of the lamella. So when we will land, this will be our backside. If you will use the FIP optimized e-chip, then at this stage, you don't need to do anything. 
Then we rotate the needle for additional 90 degrees in anti-clockwise direction. And this will be now our orientation when we will land. Now, again, we retract the needle with our lamella. And at this stage, I insert the chip into the chamber. Of course, you could do this already at the beginning. However, then you will risk that your chip might get contaminated during the whole procedure. So we have chip now in the chamber. What you see here are four electrodes of our FIP optimized e-chip. And then we slowly land our lamella on the chip. During this procedure, I constantly swap between SEM and FIP mode because in SEM mode, I correct for X, Y direction. And in FIP mode, I check the shadows so that we don't crash with the lamella into the chip. All this we did with the chip in horizontal orientation. In the next step, we need now to fix our lamella to the chip. First contact I make here diagonally from the needle, as you can see here. Then we cut, lamella, uh, we cut the lift out needle and retract it. And then we connect all other contacts. You can see here how nice landing we can do with this method. In the next step, we cut the edges. So the top edge we must cut because we need to disconnect this platinum so that these uh, two contacts that we don't uh, send, that we don't connect here, these two contacts. The bottom edge you don't have to cut, but I would still recommend you that you also cut the bottom edge. The reason you will see soon. So in the next step, we take our holder out of the chamber and we manually tilt the holder for 90 degrees. And then we just prepare the lamella like we would prepare a normal FIP sample in vertical orientation. Why I prefer vertical preparation? Because when we prepare samples in vertical orientation, we can see backside and front side during the preparation in SEM mode. If we are in this pre-tilted orientation, then we can see only the front side and the back side we don't see directly. Here you can see why it is important that we very nicely shape the needle, because if we use this potato-shaped needle, we will cover our view and we cannot fix such, uh, such needle to the lamella. So I would recommend to you that you shape the needle in such a way that the tip of the needle is approximately as thick as the lamella. Also here you can see why I cut the edges, because when we have massive contamination, as you can see here, then we will know that this is not correct. However, sometimes we have really just minor contaminations, as you can see these small dots here. However, also this minor contamination caused changes for the measurements. Cutting the membrane. So I would strongly recommend that if you use the chips with the membrane to use the ones with already pre-cut uh, holes, because when you start to cut the membranes, a lot can happen, especially what you can see here, because the membrane will bend and because the these electrodes are sitting on the membrane, also electrodes will bend. And then you will have quite some troubles with landing your lamella and to fix the lamella. So with our method, it's not possible only to land on the FIP optimized chip, but also on the chips with the membrane, as you can see here some examples. So in this case, I use four point electrically chip. And here on the bottom, you can see uh, lamellas land on electrothermal chip. And now to the experimental setup in TM. So all prepared lamellas were also characterized by TM. Uh, we used Joel ARM200F image corrected microscope and probe corrected microscope, especially for better imaging in this case. Uh, all experiments were done at 200 keV in TEM and STEM mode, 
and all lamellas were characterized by EDX and some also by ILS. So here that you see for our experiments, we have used single tilt prototypes Aduro holder and double tilt prototypes fusion holder. So here you can see how it looks like when FIP chip is placed in the holder. And this is the normal chip with the membrane. You see that FIP chip is approximately half of the size. Just to let you know that I measured the same chip with both holders and I got exactly the same result. So here is again the holder. We place the chip here at the chip. This is the chip. And here this small dot here is our fixed lamella on uh, FIP optimized e chip. Experimental setup for electrical measurements. So we used four point measurement technique. We applied different currents. 50, 100, 125, 150 microamps in, and we used three-step waveform method. We used uh, different timings for most of the samples. We applied current for 600 seconds, then we hold the current for 200 seconds and reduce the current for 600 seconds. We have used also alternative timings. However, we did not notice any difference when we use alternative timings. Then we have also studied what happens if we change the size of platinum contacts. We have first deposit so platinum contacts with the size of three by three square micrometers so that they were touching the lamella from the side and we perform current voltage measurement. Then we took the same sample and put it back to the FIP. And then we made bigger contacts with the size of seven by three square micrometers so that these contacts were then extending across the lamella surface. Uh, we also did the measurements and we noticed only minor differences in the resistance. However, we noticed that samples where we use bigger contacts that are extending across the sample surface show superior stability and reproducibility. Then we also considered what would happen if we deposit platinum contacts by using different gallium beam energies. We used 8 kV and 30 kV because from the literature it is known that when we use different gallium beam energies for depositing platinum, there might appear changes in the composition. So between there are different ratios of platinum, gallium and carbon. So we prepared two lamellas of exactly the same sizes. We landed them on the FIP optimized e-chip. And this the top one in this case, we fixed the lamella by using gallium beam energy 8 kV. And in this case, 30 kV. We can see immediately that platinum contacts that were deposited with 8 kV are show more round edges, while in this case, the contacts deposited with 30 kV show much sharper edges. In addition, we can see that the contamination here uh, for the contacts deposited with 8 kV, contamination is much larger. When we went to TM, First, we measured the sample with the beam off and with then with the beam on. And we don't see any major differences. However, we do observe some smaller differences when we compared samples where contacts were deposited with 8 kV and 30 kV. We observe that there is a bit less resistance here in this case where we have higher contamination of the sample. And then to the quality of in situ lamellas. So we characterized all the lamellas with imaging and analytical methods. Here, what you can see uh, is not your television at night, but these are lower magnification HADF stem images, because here I want to show that we can achieve uh, large clean areas with such method. Here on the bottom, you can see bright field and HADF stem images, super clean surface. And just to let you know that these are raw images, no filter or polishing was done on these images. 
As I already mentioned, all lamellas were also characterized by EDX. So you can see from EDX that we have a super clean sample and also by ILS. Uh, just to show you that uh, we, ca we can achieve very high quality of uh, lamellas also on the electrical four-point chips with a membrane. This image is a little bit worse than the one on the previous page, but this is also because this image was acquired with image-corrected microscope. And the lamella in this case was thin directly on the chip. When we do in situ, we all know that if something can go wrong, this will go wrong. That's a rule here. So I just collected some examples of what was happening during my FIP sample preparation. So in this case, I deposited lamella, nicely fixed it. That's how the sample looked like in the evening. And in the morning, when I wanted to continue, the lamella was gone. I have no idea what happened here. Probably there was some party going on, in fact. In this case, you can see that during the deposition, uh, there was some jump, I don't know, of the needle or of the stage, and the, the needle was bent. So after this, I could not deposit this lamella. Then in this case here, I was a little bit too brave and I pushed a little bit too much towards the membrane and I punched a nice hole into the membrane. And in this case, the lamella was already attached on the chip. However, it lately decided just to flip somewhere else. Also, when we work in TM, uh, a lot can go wrong. In this case, the lamella looked quite nice. Um, uh, this was some lamella with certain needle that I shaped. Um, I saw during the preparation a small crack here. However, I didn't put too much attention. As soon as I put a little bit current on this chip, there was a big crack and I lost the contact. And here on the right side, if you were ever wondering what happens if you forget to ground the sample, here is the here you can see what happens. So basically, this is a one second experiment. And now to conclude, so I showed you a new fee based methodology that can be used for preparation of TM lamella on MEMS based chips for in situ electrical and electrothermal experiments. This method is suited for any material that can undergo regular FIP preparation procedure. There are really minimal requirements. I mean, we need FIP instruments with micro manipulator and just some custom holders. What we do here is we use alternative geometry during the lift out procedure. And that's why we can deposit our lamella directly onto the e-chip. We show that there is a minimal impact of the beam energy during the platinum deposition or when we change the size of platinum contacts. And I showed you that we can prepare super clean and artifact free samples that can be later used for in situ TM. At the end, I would just like to thank some people, especially I would like to thank Dr. John Damiano for from Protochips for many discussions that we had about electrical biasing experiments. And I would like to thank some of my colleagues from the Institute, Bernhard Fenk, Ulrike Eigenthaler, and Dr. Julia Deutschle for discussion about FIP preparation. And at the end, I would like to thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much, Vesna. This was uh, very much needed, I'm sure, by the community. Um, thank you also, Roberto. We have a couple of questions. Um, I will specify if they're uh, uh, directed to one versus another speaker, but most of the questions are open to you both. Uh, the first question is, what is the maximum temperature we can use uh, with platinum material and what is the optimum material used to go until to go up to 1200 uh, degrees Celsius so the max temperature for platinum is the first half 
there's not maybe we should be asking per, uh, someone from Prochips. I do know that at a certain point, if you deposit with platinum, if you go up above a certain temperature, you will get some of that uh, platinum to kind of like melt it and kind of diffuse through. I'm not sure what that temperature is. That that would be something for someone from Prochips. I'm kind of remembering something like 900 or 950 or something like that. But again, uh, I don't usually. I make the samples. I'm never usually around when they actually run the samples. Mm -hmm. I prepared some chip that I heated, but I went to 500. I don't know what would happen if you go higher. Okay. Um, thank you for your responses. Another question is, what is the angle at which the chip is mounted? And that question came um, after Roberto's talk. Okay, so the, the chip itself is on that other 45 degree um, mount. So it's basically at 45 degrees, but we tilt plus 14 when we actually land it. So there's actually like a plus seven degrees tilt when we're touching down on the, the uh, chip. And what you'll notice in the video is that the back side kind of hits first and then the front side kind of falls. And that's just to make sure that you get good um, adhesion on the on the front side of the sample to, to make sure that you tack it down because we tack down on the back side of it so we want to make sure that we can tack it down and that's going to lay flat thank you um is it possible to have the lamella attached to the silicon chip without an even uh small angle especially if you can't manipulate your uh you can't rotate your manipulator sorry is that for me or for uh, this both of you. Yeah, because uh, what I do for for this for our method, one needs a needle with that rotates, because we take it out with in alternative geometry. So we, in our case, one would need rotation. Okay, thank you. Um, for Vesna, what is the thickness of the platinum contact deposits? Was the thickness tested in terms of electrical measurements, just like bigger or smaller deposits, or high-low KV uh, gallium deposits? I mean, this is what I showed. So we use different gallium beam energies, but then we also uh, we also tested what happens if we prepare differently thick lamellas. So we also tested this. Uh, but also I used or just a little bit platinum or more platinum. So that was also not much difference. So I, I tried everything. Okay, thank you. Um, another question for you, Vesna. Uh, could you expand a bit on what changes you need to make in to, with your workflow uh, for four-point e-chip um, or electrothermal chips, in particular the final thinning on that chip? Uh, the one on the FIP optimized e chip or the elect or the chips the with the four membrane? Point, the, the four point um, e chips. With the four leads. The FIP chip is four point. Also, FIP chip is four point, but now it's the question of whether it's the FIP chip where we have a membrane or chip without the membrane uh, or chip with the membrane. Can um, you talk about both? Oh, you do you want to say something, Roberto? I was going to say the membrane because that's usually when you do the final thinning. That's when I've yeah. always had issues with the membrane. Yeah. Now, if we have FIP chip, then thinning is much easier because we have access to the lamella from both sides, front and back. When we have a chip with a membrane, this is what I showed also the results. Some people thin it before. I thinned it when chip was already on, uh, when lamella was already fixed on the chip. So everything is possible, but then you have to be super careful that you don't punch the membrane. That's why in this case, I prefer to use the chips with pre-drilled holes that, because then it's a little bit easier to thin it. And I also observe when I have the chips with the membrane, I observe uh, these holes, you see the shadows when you thin the lamella. So you have approximately the feeling how thick your lamella still is. Uh, because on the FIP chip, you can observe directly the thickness of the lamella. This is much easier. Okay, thank you. 
Um, another question for Roberto. Uh, what is the effect if the platinum deposition is done on the lamella on the protochips using a gallium beam, but at low current? So 30 kV. Uh, low current, 30 kV low current. Um, I, I really don't know the effects of it. I mean, it, it's one of those things when you're doing your deposition, um, I usually do the 30 kV deposition. Uh, with uh, the currents I usually use are on anywhere on the order from uh, one nanoamp to 0.5. And like I said, I, I don't see the, uh, Vezina sees, Vezina's doing everything. She's going from the beginning to the end. I just do the preparation, so I don't see the end results. But I think this is question because you mentioned that first contact you deposit in uh, with with uh, electron beam and you use high current. Maybe that was the question. Oh, and that and that's just basically to tack it down. And you can use as high a current as you want. You're just trying to get a lot of deposition to just tack it down. Um, you have to worry a little bit about the spread of the platinum, of course. So typically, I'm using eight nanoamps to um, maybe 16 if I'm trying to get it down really quick. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, Vesna, did you see any breakdown of the sample due to electrical charging or discharging during the FIB preparation? No, no, no. I prepared probably around 50 samples, but uh, during this time, no, during the preparation, I did not see also during the measurement, I did not kill nothing. No, I did not see any of this. And I had also super thin samples, and now just recently, so here I showed only silicon, but recently we have been working also with other super sensitive materials and oxides, and I did not see that. Uh, what about you, Roberto? Did you see any breakdown? Uh, again, I don't see the, Of your samples? Uh, no, I, I don't see anything. Uh, after it's prepared, uh, I, I don't see it after that. Okay, thank you. Um, is there a way to remove excess platinum contamination from your your sample from the fib? And are you there mean, tips for avoiding there... curtaining during the fib preparation? To avoid curtaining effect, or did I understand? Yes. Yes. I mean, this is this is like with all the FIP sample preparation. Then one needs to change the conditions to change the angle or something to avoid the curtaining effects. Uh, this 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 depends, of course, f what material we have. It will be for mm -hmm. each material it will be differently. But there are ways. Yes, I would change the conditions first. Yeah, and as far as the platinum mm -hmm. uh, the platinum overspray, uh, if you're on the um, e chip, and then you've got like a solid sample, no membrane. You can kind of just do a little bit of an etch with the ion beam, and I'd go very lightly on that, nothing very uh, strong, no, no really high currents or anything like that. But if you're on the membrane and you've got overspray, it gets really tricky. I mean, the, the minute you put on that uh, beam on the membrane, it's you get a chance of of possibly breaking it. And if I just may, in the case that, that it's surface contamination, then one can always clean it with, with low KV, maybe with two KV and low currents. That's always possibility and we one will not really kill the membrane. Okay, thank you. Um, a question for you, Vesna. How did you clean the bottom side of the lamella when using the electrothermal e-chips with a membrane? Uh, when I use the chip with a membrane, uh, as I mentioned, I clean the bottom side. First, when we pull the lamella out and we do the first 90 degrees anticlockwise, then we clean the back side. So this is what I showed in the presentation and it's also in the paper. Uh, the step that I mentioned that is when we do the when we prepare the chip on the on on the chip with the membrane, there is one step where we need to clean the back side. Uh, they can contact me, I can discuss with them uh, or show again the, where, where this has to be done. We will, yes, we will direct these questions to you um, and 
for any questions that were not answered here in this uh, webinar, uh, the we will pass them on to the speakers and they will reach out mm -hmm. um, to respond to them directly. Um, another question is, if you land a lamella onto a, a heating chip that does not have electrical leads, do you need to do a metal attachment to the heating membrane or can you land a lamella and it will stay without any sort of attachment? For uh, both of you. Maybe I can answer that. I tried, so most of the lamellas, when you land them on the membrane or also on the FIP chip, I'm always surprised that they will stay there. Rarely they will fly away. So uh, I've also placed them several times just directly on the membrane without the contacts. However, then the question is when you go with such sample to the TEM and you will put some, uh, you will try to hit it, what will happen then? Will this still be stable or will then fly away in the TEM? Which would be even worse than uh, when it flies away just outside somewhere. Yeah, typically I, I tack it down. Uh, even if it's not uh, no any leads, I will tack it down with a little bit of platinum. You don't have to put a lot. You just need to tack it mm -hmm. down. And I do know that uh, like uh, with the external lift out needle that uh, um, what is it? Lucille Gianuzzi does, they just do static uh, placement. So they don't do any type of uh, tacking down or anything like that. And that mm -hmm. seems to work. Um, yeah. It will work until you apply some, uh, maybe if you hit just a little bit, but if yeah. you will hit a bit more, then I, I doubt this will stay. That's then a little bit of lottery, so. Yeah, it really depends on your experiment, uh, mm -hmm. your conditions and everything. So you, you have to play around with it. It's one of those things, you, you try it, it doesn't work. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'll tell you, I've prepared a lot of samples and I've had a lot of failures and Bez and I, I I, I like the, the all the stuff that you had, all your failures. I've, I've had all those. <laughs> yeah, it's life. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Is it possible to lift the lamella from a prepared uh, fib lamella that's attached to the chip and then reattach it to that chip, to another chip? Is it possible to like lift it off cleanly? Mm -hmm. Uh, every time when you when you something is deposited and you lift it up and put it back down, it's always the quality will degrade. So, if there is possibility, it's better to prepare a new one. That's my personal okay. opinion. Yeah, I think that's that's a, that's a good point. Um. Okay. Uh, well, thank you both for uh, this, your wonderful presentations. Um, I'm sure the community is very happy um, that you presented these, especially the failures. <laughs> I think that goes a long way. Um, thank you to everyone who attended. Um, and if you have any questions, please feel free to drop them in the chat. And uh, again, we will surely have our presenters respond to them directly. Um, again, thank you so much, Vesna, and thank you so much, Roberto. Um, okay, thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks for Bye -bye. having me. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.